So I should have done this a few weeks ago, but I didn't do it back when Scream 6 came out for a couple reasons. One, I'm just lazy. And two, I kind of wanted to give a little space after the movie, after Scream 6 came out. So that way I'm not spoiling it for a lot of people. And I kind of figured I was going to do two videos, but instead I'm just going to do two videos in one. So welcome to my overall Scream rankings. I'm going to rank all six Scream movies from my least favorite to my favorites, as well as rank all the Scream killers from my least favorite to my favorites. So let's just dive right into it. Let me just talk about Scream 3 right away quickly and just forget about it. Scream 3 is bad. It's really bad. I ranted about it for 20 minutes. It's bad. It's not as fun as the other two. It tries to be the most serious Scream movie and tries to be the most silly Scream movie at the same time. And the other Scream movies, they blended it so perfectly that it was definitely an uncomfortable it was definitely uncomfortable to laugh at times, but there was definitely times where it's supposed to be scary and I am laughing. But Scream 3 just didn't blend it that well, and it was just totally inconsistent throughout. Uh, the main characters like Dewey and Gale are just annoying this movie. Sydney is just sidelined throughout this movie. Uh, the new characters are just not that fascinating, with the exception of Parker Posey, played by Jennifer Jolie, uh, of Jennifer Jolie, played by Parker Posey. Um, but other than that, I just didn't care for this movie in retrospect. Um, there were so many plot lines that I'm just like, this doesn't make work, this doesn't make sense. They toned down the violence in this movie, which, given the environment at the time, I can completely understand. But they could have done a lot more with the actual script of the movie. At number five, Scream 5. Scream 5's main issue is that the new characters just aren't that well developed enough to really care about. And I think that's kind of the main issue with this movie. There are a couple good performances. Melissa Barrera is good as Sam. Uh, Jack Quaid is good as Richie. Jenna Ortega is good as Tara. And the movie does a few interesting twists throughout, mainly in the beginning, where the person who's attacked in the opening scene, which was Jenna Ortega, she survives the movie, surprisingly. And I do think the killer motive is very fascinating about how they're kind of toxic fans and how far their toxic fandom goes. And I do think that is very interesting given the environment that we're kind of in with uh, entertainment these days and how it just seems like you just screw up with someone's past and like someone's, if you screw up with someone's past and someone's present, it kind of just has this whole domino effect. I do think that is very interesting. I guess I wasn't satisfied with how they used the original characters in this movie. Like Sydney's barely in the movie. Gail's barely in the movie. Dewey is straight up killed in this movie. And I just felt like it didn't really focus enough on the original characters and didn't really focus enough on the new characters to make me really care about them too much, but it's still an alright movie. At number four, Scream 4. This movie tried a little bit too hard to be unlike Scream in any way. Like, it didn't have a lot of the musical cues, it didn't have a lot of the same style, and it's also kind of sad because this is also Wes Craven's last movie ever. But there are a few good performances here. Emma Roberts as Jill. She's pretty good, particularly when it's revealed that she's the killer. Uh, Hayden Pantier is really good as Kirby, and I was really happy to see her in Scream 6. And I do think the killer motive is fascinating in this movie, particularly Jill's, where she's basically like, you know, she wants to be like Sydney, And that's kind of an interesting twist on the whole final girl trope throughout the, throughout the whole horror genre, basically. And her goal of like trying to be famous in the most twisted ways possible is also very fascinating. And it kind of predicted like, you know, a lot of things about social media that I'm looking back on it. I'm looking back on this movie now. I'm like, oh, that's a, uh, that's a little creepy in retrospect. How do we not see that coming? But Scream 4, I think it tried a lot to be like a remake of a Scream movie rather than just a Scream movie, which I think that was kind of the intent of this movie because it was mocking remakes at the time. Like, Scream 5 was remocking, you know, the whole requel craze. So, I do think it is an effective movie. Um, I don't think any of the Scream sequels are bad, with the exception of Scream 3. But I don't rank this as high as some of the other two. At number 3 is Scream 6. Initially, I didn't like this movie as much as I liked the other Scream movies. But looking back on it, I do like a lot of it. I do like the fact that, again, Scream 5, the new characters, didn't really have a lot to do. Scream 6 fixed that problem. And I do care about these characters a lot more in this movie than I did in Scream 5. The only problem is the new characters they introduce are just not that fascinating. They're kind of just, you know, they're just bait for Ghostface. And I kind of just, I do like the characters a lot more this time. I do think the kills are a lot more interesting. They're more well done and they're more intense than some of the other ones. Like the bodega scene and the scene where they're trying to cross on that ladder to the other apartment. That was very intense. And even though you kind of figured out what the outcome was going to be, it was definitely, it was definitely interesting. But um, I also just didn't like in this movie how it basically is a retread of Scream 2. 
like there are a couple references to things in Scream 2 and there are a couple plot points where it's like, oh, that's like Scream 2. But then when you get to the killer reveal, it's basically straight out of Scream 2. And I'm like, oh, come on. Come on. And I'll talk about that when I talk about the uh, Scream killers. So I do think Scream 6 is better upon thinking about it. But at the same time, there are definitely some issues where I'm like, come on. Just be your own thing. At least Scream 5 tried to be its own thing while paying homage to the original movie. So, But this movie came close to just basically copying another movie in the franchise. At number two, speaking of Scream 6, why not talk about Scream 2 quickly? Scream 2 is probably my favorite of the sequels. I do like a lot of the, a lot of the scenes in the movie, particularly the opening scene, Sydney's scene on the stage, um, the final confrontation with the Ghostface Killers. I do think the motive. I do think the reveal of Mrs. Sal of uh, Debbie Salt as Mrs. Loomis is pretty interesting, and I do think the reveal of Timothy Oliphant's Mickey as the killer is also very interesting as well. And I do think Nev Campbell Nev Campbell's performance is better here than it was in Scream One, and I thought she was really good in Scream One. Here she's given a lot more to do, and I do think it's very effective. Um, but overall, I do. But overall, they can't top the original Scream movie. Scream comes at number one for me. It is it is my one of my favorite horror movies, I'm being honest. It manages to blend the comedy and the horror of this story perfectly. Like, the opening scene, looking back on it, is just absolutely horrifying. Even with, you know, countless parodies, like, from Scary Movie, it just still feels absolutely horrifying. Drew Barrymore sold in the beginning, and Ghostface Killers sold it in the beginning. And I do think that it works overall. It works as like both critique of horror movies, a tribute to horror movies, just a celebration of horror movies in general. The performances are really good. Nev Campbell's great. Uh, Gail, uh, Courtney Cox, David Arquette, Jamie Kennedy, Skeet Ulrich, Matthew Lillard, Rose McGowan. They're all fantastic in this movie. There are times where I was absolutely terrified. There was times where I was absolutely laughing. It was just a perfect comedy movie. So that's why it was perfect horror comedy. And so to me, it ranks number one on the screen movie list. And the one that it's like, I enjoyed the movie so much that I go back and rewatch all the screen sequels, even though I don't love them as much as the first one. But I still enjoy this franchise. So anyway, let's talk about the killers of this franchise. So the killers of the franchise, um, they've been pretty hit or miss. Some have been really good. Some have been really effective. Some have been really creepy and scary and I wouldn't want to deal with them. Some I've just been very disappointed in. So this is my ranking of all 13 Scream Killers from my least favorite to my favorite. Let's just dive into it. At number 13, Ethan played by Jack Campion in Scream 6. Just saying, just accusing someone of being the killer over and over and over again, it gets annoying after a while. Um, and Ethan is not an interesting killer. It's not an interesting reveal. It's just, it's just one of the least satisfying reveals of all these movies, if I'm being honest. Um, the only thing that I, the only scene I think he was actually a killer in was the scene where, again, they're climbing on the ladder to kind of get to the apartment to escape Ghostface. I think that was the only scene that he was actually a Ghostface killer in. Other than that, nothing. The only thing that is kind of interesting is how, uh, Chad and Mindy kind of react to him. Chad is defending him because he knows him. Mindy is kind of on the fence thinking he's the killer since he's a new character. But then later on, uh, Chad becomes suspective of him. But Mindy becomes, Mindy thinks he's not the killer because she's stabbed by a different ghost face killer on the subway. That is interesting, but I just didn't think he was that interesting. Even after the reveal that he's a killer, he doesn't have any quirks afterwards. Unlike, say, like Mickey or Stu or someone like that. He's just not an interesting character, in my opinion. At number 12, Charlie from Scream 4, played by Rory Culkin. Charlie may be the most, one of the more brutal killers of the entire series, which kind of makes this even worse in comparison. Uh, Charlie as a killer is very brutal. I think he did the majority of the kills in this movie, but I also just feel like when it's revealed that he's the killer and the reason why he's doing it, it's just not interesting to me. And immediately he's stabbed by Jill almost immediately and is taken out immediately. I'm like, oh, come on. Even Ethan had more to do in Scream 6 than Charlie did. So uh, that was kind of disappointing. I kind of figured one of the film guys had to be one of the killers. And it was just kind of disappointing that... It wasn't really disappointing that Charlie was the killer. But at the same time, once, you know, once we find out what's going on with Charlie and what his whole deal was, it becomes less interesting. Kind of makes all those scenes that he did as Ghostface less interesting. At number 11, Roman played by Scott Foley in Scream 3. Uh, I hated Roman. I really hated Roman. 
Not because he's a killer, but he's just so whiny. He's just so annoying when he reveals himself as the Ghostface killer. And he's supposed to be the mastermind behind this whole thing. And yet he's a complete moron. Um, and also because he's the only killer, it kind of takes away a lot of the suspense of like all these movies where it's like, oh, I can go back and rewatch these movies and try to see who the killer was and like go back and like try to predict who this was. Because I'm thinking, oh, it could be this person or it could be this person. With Scream 3, it's just completely gone. It's just Roman. It's just Roman. And I think he's just, obviously, they kind of joked he's way too superhuman in this movie. And honestly, that got really annoying after a while. Like, he just gets shot multiple times. He just gets stabbed multiple times. Nothing breaks this guy except a bullet to the head. It just, I didn't think he was interesting. And the whole reveal, like, what his thing was, it's kind of fascinating. But because, again, because he's just such a whiny character, I just hated it. And I also hated the fact that uh, Roman was he never met Sydney at any point. At least in all the other movies, Sydney met the killers before they revealed themselves as the killers, so it kind of makes the reveal less interesting by comparison. Um, it just doesn't really work. I've ranted about Scream 3 a lot, and so you can check that out on my channel. At number 10, uh, Detective Bailey. I kind of figured he was in it on some way, played by Dermot Mulroney. Um, the only things that I, the only scenes where I think he actually was the killer was the opening scene... Uh, taking out Jason and his roommates, as well as the scene in the bodega. Because, you know, Ethan and Quinn were kind of upstairs and they were at the party the whole time. So I guess that would make sense. He's definitely a brutal killer, but at the same time, I just felt like he was a pale comparison to Mrs. Loomis. I didn't think he was as interesting. I didn't think he was chewing the scenery enough. Uh, I just was a little disappointed with Dermot Mulroney in this movie. At number nine, Quinn, played by Liana Liberto in Scream 6. Again... Pretty brutal killer, kind of like her dad is. I think she was the killer on the subway. She was the killer who attacked Gail in this movie. Other than that, I just didn't think she was interesting enough. It is kind of interesting, uh, you know, having her pretend to be killed by a ghost face killer to kind of take her off the map. And admittedly with Detective Bailey, as well as Quinn, they both have lines that allude to the death of a family member. And when you realize that they are Richie's family, it kind of makes those lines in retrospect a little, uh, a little darker in retrospect. That is something I really like in movies, so it kind of raises them up a bit higher in my opinion. But at the same time, I just didn't really like the whole reveal of them as the killers along with Ethan as the killer. Because it's just a pale comparison to what they did with uh, Mrs. Loomis in Scream 2. Admittedly, it was interesting seeing three Ghostface killers uh, at once and seeing two Ghostface in action at the same time. But other than that, the motive is just not interesting. At number 8 is Amber. Played by Mikey Frieden, Mikey Madsen. Um, I thought, I didn't think she was an interesting character to begin with. I think she only appears in a handful of scenes in the first act. And then completely gone for the second act. And then, you know, it's at her house for the final act. She's gone for a good portion of the movie and kind of just made me realize, oh, she's probably the killer. And I wasn't really surprised when she took out the gun and she's like, yeah, I know you're not the killer. <sighs> like that was, that was kind of a cool reveal. And admittedly her death is pretty cool. But it was just so obvious that she was the killer. I just didn't really care for it. Uh, you know, she's kind of having fun. Not as much fun as uh, Jack Quaid in this movie. But, um, again, it's only memorable for the reveal as well as the finale. The whole reveal and the, you know, her death. And also the motive is kind of interesting. Where it's like they were both kind of toxic fans and they kind of wanted to take the franchise in a new way. So they tried to concoct this plan of trying to make Sam the killer it is a bit over the top, but I also think it's incredibly stupid, but that's kind of the best way to describe Scream. At number seven, Mickey, played by Timothy Oliphant. Uh, Mickey has a lot of the same problems that Amber has in Scream 2, where he's basically gone for a majority of the movie, and he doesn't appear for the entirety of the second act, it feels like. And then when it's revealed in the third act that he was one of the killers, it doesn't really work for me because it's like he was just gone for a while. And at first, when I first watched this back in like 2011, I completely forgot who he was. Like, who was that? Oh, right. He was a friend of Sydney's here. Um, but when it does, when he does reveal himself as the killer, he has a lot of fun with the performance. And the motive is fascinating where, you know, it's kind of like all these killers don't want to be caught in some way. Mickey, his intention is to be caught. I do think that is very fascinating. And again, uh, Timothy Oliphant, he's just chewing up the scenery and the scene is just so perfect and he kind of like popularized the trope where it's like oh they always come back for one more scare which they kind of twisted it in this movie how 
instead of Mrs. Loomis coming back, it was Mickey who came back, even though he was shot for like in, even though he was like shot and unconscious for like ten minutes, he just came back. It was funny. It was over the top. It's an enjoyable moment, but I just felt like he just wasn't in the movie enough to make me go, okay, you aren't the killer. At number six, Jason, played by Tony Revolori in Scream 6. Surprisingly high up on my list, he's not the main killer of this movie. And yet he's better than the actual killers of this movie. The reason why he's so high up on this list is because there's a lot more questions that I have about his character than I do about the other killers. Um, you know, at, in the first act, he kills his teacher and it's he actually takes off his mask and i'm like whoa what is this movie doing are you showing us the ghostface killer before you even show the title of the movie and then it's revealed he's not the real ghostface killer in this movie he's just someone else trying to do the same thing and that is very fascinating it's like i never really thought of that like all these like ghostface killers that emerge like that is very fascinating to think about like how many times is like it gonna happen because like normally in these movies you only have to deal with one set of killers now you're going to have to deal with like two sets of killers in this movie. I do think that's very fascinating. What kind of took me out of the his performance a bit was the way he described the death. It just, it didn't sound right. And it just sounded odd. And not for what he's saying. It's more like the way he's saying it is just, I just didn't buy it. I didn't buy that he was entirely a psychopath in this movie. But I do think the questions that this moment raises is a lot more fascinating than what we got with Scream 6. At number five, Richie, played by Jack Quaid in Scream 5. Uh, this was one of the killers that, again, I predicted in Scream 5. I kind of figured he was the killer. Like, again, if it's going to be a remake of the original, you got to have the boyfriend of the main character be the villain. Yeah, it's not really a surprise that he was. Um, but, like, he does a really good job of trying to convince you that he's not the killer. And I was kind of thinking he was, but then the moments were like, oh, I don't, I don't think he is, actually. But like going back and rewatching this movie and kind of seeing some of the moments from this movie where it makes me think that maybe he's not the killer. But looking back, it's like he's clearly doing something sinister like, oh, he's watching the stab movies, not because he's trying to learn about these movies and the history of Woodsboro, but he's trying to learn the killer's moves. That I found fascinating. Or when he's like watching the video on the stab movies and how stab eight was just awful in every way and just unlike all the other stab movies. Um, he's not watching it to kind of like learn the history of the stab movies, but he's learning it to kind of like get himself psyched up. That I do think is very fascinating. Um, I guess it was just kind of disappointing because I just predicted him as the killer. Jack Quaid does a good performance, partic gives, a, gives a particularly good performance, particularly in the end. Again, one of those scenery chewing performances. Um, not, not quite as good in like that, not, not as good in that department as say Mickey or Stu in Scream 1. I'm going to talk about Scream 1 in just a moment. But, you know, I thought he was an interesting killer. I didn't want him to be a killer. And yet, I also expected him to be it. So that was a little disappointing. At number 4, Mrs. Loomis, played by Laurie Metcalf in Scream 2. Uh, this is another reveal where I thought it was actually really well done. The reveal of her as Mrs. Loomis is actually really well done. Um, I also really like how it's kind of just a twist on the whole Friday the 13th, how... Jason's mother was the killer, and now now in this movie, it's the mother of the killer of the previous movie who is the killer. That is fun. And also, like Mickey, she's just having a blast with this movie, particularly in the last act. And you just don't see an actress like Laurie Metcalf, who's like, you know, normally on TV and just kind of just being like this funny character on tale television and then just being this complete deranged person, just going after this college girl for killing her son. I do think that is really well done. I do think her character's great, and I do think that the reveal is very fun overall. Um, I don't really have too many problems with Mrs. Loomis as the killer. I guess the only issue is that she appears at the crime scenes almost quickly, almost to the point where it's like, huh, maybe you are the killer. Or she kind of has a lot of details about the kills right away. It's like, huh, maybe you are the killer because you know all this stuff. Other than that, I do think it's really well done. And number three is Stu, played by Matthew Lillard in Scream 1. Stu is just fun. Stu is just absolutely, he is everything about this movie. He is completely funny. He's completely deranged. He's completely insane. He's completely pathetic. And he does that all in the last 10 minutes of this movie. And I do think he's a great foil. He's definitely really funny in this movie. Um, uh, overall, Matthew Lord, he's great in this movie. I can't say more about him. At number two is Jill from Scream 4, played by Emma Roberts. When Jill is revealed as the killer, it definitely turns the movie on its head a lot because she's supposed to be the final girl. She's related to Sydney. 
seemed like she was going to be the Sydney figure, but turns out that was her plan all along. Um, I do like the reveal of her as the killer in retrospect because of her motive, where she's like, I want to be famous, and this is the way to get famous, and also, I want to be like you because I'm jealous of you, Sydney. That was also really fascinating. I will admit, I don't think she killed a lot of people in this movie. I think the only people she killed were the two police detectives and also her mother, which is, you know, obviously messed up. But at the same time, I'm just thinking, like, Ghostface has been shown to be this really tall person, like, over six feet tall. And you're telling me that Emma Roberts is the killer. What kind of shoes was she wearing during that time? I don't know. But that kind of took me out of the movie a bit. But I do think this is one of the killers where I'm like, I do not want to deal with this person in any way. This is actually terrifying. And I do think she gives a really good performance. And also the ending scene after she's killed by Sydney, obviously. Uh, and they're all like, hey, Sid hey, we have a survivor. Jill's survivor of the Woodsboro Massacre reboot or whatever it is. And just seeing her dead body is just obvious what's going to come out in the next few minutes. That is also really good. And I think she got what she deserved, but she also got what she wanted. That is really fascinating, really scary. I do think Emma Roberts did a good job here. But the number one killer, Billy Loomis, played by Skeet Ulrich in Scream 1. His, his deeds have haunted Sydney and have haunted these movies forever. It, he is absolutely menacing. He is absolutely disturbing. And he does a really good job of trying to convince you that maybe he's not the killer. How he tries to, you know, get with Sydney is, is very... At first you think it's very sweet, but then when he realizes it's going on, it's actually very sick. He's a very sick individual. He is a re he does a really good job of, like, both trying to convince you he's not the killer. But at the same time, it's kind of like playing with the jokes of horror movies. How characters can't see how, you know, how obvious things are. It's clearly obvious from the moment that he was arrested that he was the killer. And I do think his reveal is interesting. His spirit has basically been haunting the main characters ever since the beginning. And that's why Billy Loomis, in my opinion, is my favorite Scream killer. So what did you think of the Scream movies? How would you rank them from your least favorite to your favorite? How would you rank the killers? Uh, comment down below. Subscribe to the channel. This is Pat. Stay safe.